Praise the Lord. I would like to thank God and His servant for this opportunity to be taking us through the morning, uh, the voice of restoration, morning devotion. And this, the first day, the first day of this new month, uh, the first session of this new month of May. And I'll be taking us through the opening prayer. Very shortly, we'll be going before the Lord to appreciate Him and giving thanks for the good deeds that He has been going before, that He has been doing in our lives and we'll be taking the reading from the book 
of Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 1. And it says, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. We will be going before the Lord and thanking him for his faithfulness that we have, he has granted unto us into this new month of May. He kept us through April and we believe that hand will not grow short in this month. Let us go before the Lord and appreciate him and thank him for his good hand and his good deeds that we have, we have enjoyed. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we appreciate you and we thank you. We have returned, Lord, in this new month to appreciate you for the success of this series, for the success of this ministry. And Lord, we have returned to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for continuously continually enabling us to reach out to the people. Thank you, Lord, for continuously continually enabling us to share your word on a, on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for the protection that we have enjoyed. Thank you, Lord, for the provision. Lord, we appreciate you. We do not take any of it for granted. Lord, to you alone be all the praise. Father, alone to you alone be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name that we have prayed. Um, now we will be going before the Lord to ask for his presence. And we will be taking our reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. And it says, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. This blessed morning, we have all woken up, we have all made that sacrifice to be here, to seek the face of God. Let us go before the Lord and call for his presence in each and every of our houses. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to call for your presence this morning. Lord, we seek for your awesome presence, your presence that grants a fullness of joy. We seek for it in each and every connected member's houses, in each and everyone's vicinity. Lord, we call for your presence even as in the studio as well. Father, Lord, we ask that your presence reign mightily in our midst. We ask for your presence to reign mightily in our midst this morning, Father. Thank you, mighty Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name that we have prayed. We'll be going before the Lord to commit the viewers of the voice of restoration, morning glory. And we'll be taking our reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 133 and verse number three verse number one to three sorry and it says behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard even aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as he drew of hermon and as the dew that ascended that descended upon the mountains of zion for there the lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore We'll be going before the Lord, he that has caused us to gather here this morning, and also to call, to call for the, the other viewers and ask for smooth transmission in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we commit all the viewers of this, of this service in your hands, and Lord, we ask you, Lord, for even those that you have ordained to be here that have not woken up yet, we ask you, Lord, to wake them up from the sleep of death. Lord, we pray for a smooth transmission. We remove every barrier that the enemy is setting up to hinder the deliverance of your word to your people this morning. Father, Lord, we pray for a smooth deliverance, a smooth transmission. In everybody's houses, Lord, we pray for smooth network connections in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, gather your people to hear your word this morning. Gather your people to hear your word from every corner of this world. Lord, gather your people. Lord, those asleep, wake them up. Lord, do not allow the enemy to steal their daily bread from them this morning. Thank you, mighty Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name that I have prayed. Amen. And we'll be going before the Lord um, to pray for the word that his servant is set to deliver. And we'll be taking our reading from the book of John, chapter 6, and verse number 63. And it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We'll be going before the Lord and saying and asking him, Lord, that the word that is coming our way this, this, this morning shall speak truth into our life and shall quicken, shall quicken any stagnant, stagnant areas that we have been experiencing in our lives. Let us go before the Lord 
in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, Lord, that as your word is being delivered this morning, Lord, that you shall give us receptive hearts, Lord. The word that shall reach us unto us this morning shall quicken us for greatness, Lord. It shall quicken us for breakthrough this year. Lord, the word shall quicken us in any area of our life that we have been experiencing stagnation. Lord, we shall smoothen out every uneven, uneven things, any uneven thing in our life, Lord. It shall smoothen out any uneven character that we have been developing in our lives. Thank you, mighty Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Finally, we'll be going before the Lord to commit God's servant into his hands, and we're going to be asking the Lord, the Lord, put a fresh anointing upon your servant, as you have done in the past, do the same this morning. Let us go before the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to anoint your servant afresh this morning. Lord, press, press, place a fresh, and, a fresh anointing over him this morning. Lord, give him eloquence as he stands to speak before your people today. Cause him to deliver the word that you have packaged in him, Lord, without it. Thank you, mighty Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name that we have prayed. Amen. Let us go before the Lord and appreciate him for he has heard and answered our prayers. Father, with the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for hearing and answering our prayers this morning. Thank you, great Jesus. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. 
I believe God has brought each and every one of us I believe God has brought each and every one of us to this wonderful time and he has brought us for a definite purpose and I believe this morning is going to be a unique time in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning everyone. God of all faithfulness it's about to do every one of us good Amen. at this hour. Amen. I also welcome you to a new month. Amen. The month of we the month of May. It is our month of unlimited favor. Amen. And that which God has spoken, He will confirm in your life. Amen. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One more time, let's go ahead. And appreciate the King of glory. Let's give him praise. Let's give him adoration. Let's thank him one more time for bringing us into a new month. Go ahead and give him thanks. Wherever you are, give him thanks. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. We glorify you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you for the month of April. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your divine guidance. Thank you for leading us. Oh yes, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. It is your mighty hand that brought us into this new month. We celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name. The Bible says we should acknowledge God in all our ways and he will direct our paths. Acknowledge God in all our ways and he will direct our paths. It is in that vein right now we'll be committing this month into the hand of God. Having thank him for bringing you into it. You'll be thanking him, right? Uh, you'll be committing this month into the hand of the Almighty God. There is something about God. Nothing committed into his hand can ever smell failure. I want you to put your life, the works of your hand, your family, the project in your hand, everything that has to do with you, he said he will perfect all that concerned us. But get it done better when we commit it into his hand. I want you to go ahead and commit your health, your finances, your relationship with God. Commit everything of yours to God concerning the month of May. Let's go ahead and pray that prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I commit my life into your hand. I commit my relationship with you into your hands again, O oh Lord. For it's not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but the one that is so mercy. Lord, by your mercy, O oh Lord, grant me access into your presence. Grant me access, access into your presence. Father, Lord, let me not be run dry of revelation. Baptize me with a new oil. Anoint me with a new oil. I commit all the meetings that I'll be having with God's people this month, I commit it into your hand. Lord, anoint me to function. Anoint me to function. Anoint me to deliver. Every time I stand before your people, Lord, let me have direct connection to the throne of grace. To the throne of grace, O oh Lord, grant me access into your presence, O oh Lord. Grant me access into your presence, O oh Lord. I commit my prayer life into your hand. I commit my family life into your hand. I commit the ministry that you have entrusted into my hand. I commit it to you. I commit it membership. I commit all the branches of our churches. I commit it into your hand, O oh Lord. 
I commit nations of Kenya into your hand. I commit Nigeria into your hand. Everywhere there is turmoil across the globe. Father, you are the Prince of Peace. I commit it to your hand, O oh Lord. I commit the nations. I commit the body of Christ, O oh Lord. Let it be a month that the body of Christ will, ad will advance, O oh Lord. Advance your kingdom. Advance your kingdom. Advance your kingdom, O oh Lord. Oh, make it a time of revelation. Make it a time of deliverance. Make it a time of revelation and precision to God's people, O oh Lord. I commit the month of April, oh Lord. I commit my finances into your hand. I commit my relationship with everyone into your hand, O oh Lord. My going out is blessed. My coming is blessed. I commit my night season into your hand. There shall be, there shall be no emergency. I will have no need of ambulance in my family. I commit everything that has to do with me, O oh Lord. I cover myself with the blood, precious blood of Jesus. I commit my wife into your hand. I commit my children into your hand. I commit my spiritual children into your hand. I commit the work that you have given them into your hand, O oh Lord. Make it a month of prosperity, O oh Lord. Make it a month of prosperity, O oh Lord. I commit this platform into your hand. Enrich it, O oh Lord. Enrich it, O oh Lord. Let no one come and be disappointed. Let no one join and be disappointed. Meet everyone at the point of their needs. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord, let the theme of this month answer in everyone's life according to the declaration it shall be our month of unlimited unlimited favor unlimited favor favor will deliver your desire into your hands in the name of jesus christ favor will bring to birth your long awaited miracle the bible says and and, and noah found favor he escaped destruction by the favor of god you shall escape every form of destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. By the favor of God, the barren will conceive this month. As many that are cry unto God, no matter the reality of their health system, Father, you will supernaturally, he said, the power from on high shall overshadow them. I see that woman in tears. I see you laughing this month. I see your laughter beginning at the end of this month. I see God supernaturally seal the mouth of all your enemy by his supernatural act of, 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 of conception in the name of Jesus Christ. That health story is changing this month. I prophesy to you, get ready right now, that health story, that incurable disease, that terminal disease that has killed other, by the favor of God, God is causing you to escape the trap of death via it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I can hear somebody, somebody joining, somebody joining a lifestyle of unemployment is coming to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Door of palaces, doors of kings are opening to some right now. Job opportunity, traveling opportunity, whatever path, whatever means, God will use to advance you. Favor is a supernatural lift that advances people. You know, when you enter a lift, you just get yourself on the 15th floor effortlessly. That is how favor is. I prophesy to you, by the favor of God, you are finding yourself in your high places. In your high places. He said, he will make my feet like the high feet, and I will walk in my high places. Every minister that will come across this, across this brokers, I decree for you, there is always what we do, what to do to advance. God will open your eyes. You will see it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every oil that is running dry, I command a refreshing from heaven. Every oil of ministry that is running dry, I command a refilling in the name of Jesus Christ. Every weight that is on your shoulder that lock, up, lock you out of direction, lock you out of functioning, lock you out of favor. Such yoke are hereby destroyed in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are finding fulfillment. You are finding a refreshing. 
He said, in the days of his power, his people shall be willing. I command outpouring of his power upon us as a believer that we move like a wind. We will move like a lightning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's quickly take our seat in our various locations at this hour, wherever you are. Once again, I'd like to welcome each and every one of us. I can see Pastor Isaac is online already. I can see quite a lot of us. I can see you, Joe, uh, and Ben. God bless you, Elder Beatrice. I can see quite a lot of us. We are already set for what God has to say today. And I believe God will speak peace to you. God will speak direction for you. This is a new month. This is a new month. New thing will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Evelyn Omondi, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Marcelo Yango, God bless you. Precious Jones, God bless you. Sue, God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate every one of you. I want to request that you begin to share this morning broadcast. Take advantage of these brokers to preach also, to play a role in bringing the good news to the doorstep, right to the bedroom of someone on your contact. Make sure you are sharing now. Make sure you are sharing now. You see, it is a mystery. It is a mystery. It is a mystery. The Lord said, God gave his word. Great is the company of the people that preach it or that spread it or that share it. So it is in, 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 in the infinite wisdom of God, he knew a day like this, a time like this will come. Whereby, we will not be only one publishing the gospel as a preacher. Other people who are hearing us will take advantage of the technology and reach out to others. I, I, I give this testimony before I share with you. We had a new lady in the church with her two daughters, uh, with her two children, and he said, I got to know this ministry because my friend always share your brokers. And, when I, I, and I've been listening. You see, I don't know that woman. I don't know that fellow. There's no how the gospel I'm preaching will have ever reached her except someone, someone who cares for others decided to share. You know, sharing a message is sowing a seed because you use your data, you use your equipment. And just like Peter was never let go with barrenness, with unfruitfulness, after he gave out his boat, Jesus said, now it is time to reward you. I see God rewarding every one of us that we key into this understanding and make it a way of life. It is my joy, not for fame, but it is my joy that what God is saying through you, he's able to say to many. Praise God. God bless you. Well, we thank God for, for last week, uh, uh, sorry, the last uh, series of teaching. We thank God for what he has done with it. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, today we are starting a new topic. And I believe God that has always ministered to us, he will not let us down. He's going to come in a unique way. And this is very, very crucial. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, we'll be looking at... Um, we'll be looking at uh, a subject that is very, very crucial. When you read Deuteronomy, you begin to ask yourself, certain question in relationship with what that scripture says and what we see practically in our days. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 13, Deuteronomy 28, and verse number 13. It says, And the law, not man, 
and the law. It says, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. Hmm. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. On one condition, if thou shalt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. To observe and to do them. To observe and to do them. Mm. Whatever God promised here, it is God that will make it happen. And I quickly want you to know to everyone looking at this scripture and that you are a believer. It's an indication that God has leadership, greatness position for every one of us, no matter our number. No matter our number. No matter our present state. It is at the top for everyone. Everyone. He said, thou shalt be above only. Above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If you look at this scripture, he didn't indicate that you may not start from beneath. But you will not end your journey as a beneath personality. You will end your journey and be above only. So there is a place for every child of God on the top. Top of your profession. Top in ministry. Top in business. You become a business guru, legitimate business guru, guru, not those who are thieving and stealing. No, there is a place. As long as you are a child of God, there is a seat on the top for you, above only, above only, the ultimate of every child of God is that they be above only. And somebody say, is it possible to be above only? It is very possible. Because I remember when we were in school, I'd had opportunity twice, I think twice, to be given third position in our class. Third position. Why was I given third position? There were two people who were number one. They scored the same marks. So there were no number two. And I was given number three. What does he imply? It means God has no problem making all of us above. It will just fulfill his prophecy that none among his children are below. So there is a place for everyone on the top. There is a place. But if you look at this statement, 
you will also see there is a, there are condition for it. There are condition for it. The condition is, if thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. To observe and to do them. You observe it and get yourself ready to the doing of the same. You observe it and get yourself for the doing of the same. Now, that means God who promised you the top only is the one that will make it happen by your cooperation. Because he said, this is what he will do. This is the condition he requires from you and me. That call for something. That brings us to what David was saying. That we may unite, that God may unite us with his way. Two cannot work together except they be agreed. That means there are certain things God will be saying to you and when you observe them and do them, then we give God opportunity to bring the supernatural to bear. And then suddenly you are catapulted from the lower part of life and be established above. He said, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the Lord, if, you, if, if, if that thou hearken unto, if that thou hearken, the word hearken means heed unto the commandment of the law thy God, which I commanded thee this day. Receive the commandment, observe them, and do them. Now, the Almighty God will therefore means He will be coming to us in form of instruction. Instruction. That's why He's talking about the thing He will command you. Listen to the word commandment does not give room for your opinion. And that is in line with principle of life. You know why it's not giving room to your opinion? It's not giving you to your, give room to your opinion because he's the one who promised you what he will do. So he, he's not asking you to do it. He's the one who is going to get it done. So we must give him the right to prescribe you must give him the right to give instruction of what that we deliver what he promised. Our is to line up. As we are expectant to be above only, then we must key into what he's saying. If I say I'm going to give you a dinner, you should give me the privilege. You should give me the privilege of deciding the restaurant I'm taking you to. You should give me the right, the, the preference. I mean, the, the, the privilege, if it is my home, to cook the food that I have. Now, that's what God is saying. God is saying, every one of us is liftable. But we must give him the privilege to give instruction that we bat the lifting. Every time you hear the promises of God, please, Wait and submit yourself for his instruction. It is his instruction that will deliver his promise. The value cannot be coming from God at the expense of your instruction. No. The value is coming from God 
to be delivered by his instruction. Haven't established this. I want you to see the divine path to greatness. Divine path to greatness. That's what I'm sharing in this series. The divine path. The approved path. The ordained path. The empowered path to greatness. And the best person who can show us the path to greatness is God. Because greatness belongs to him. Greatness belongs to him. So he's in best position to tell us the path that leads there. The path that leads there. Anyone who has never been to China and says he's taking you to China, uh, you take insurance because the two of you might get lost. There is high tendency that the two of you get lost because he has never been to China. God own greatness and therefore he's in better position. He's the above God. So he's in a better position to take us to where he belongs. If you look at 1 Chronicle 29, 1 Chronicle chapter 29 and verse 11. Verse 11. You will love it. You will understand what I'm saying. He said, Thy, O Lord, is the greatness. Not just greatness, the greatness. And the power and the glory. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as the head above all. It will take God that is above all to make you above only. Stop looking for above position from man. Stop looking for above position from government and their policies. Start looking for the above position and placement in life from God that is above. God that own greatness. Stop looking for greatness among men. God own greatness. So God is the most suitable person to show us path, to instruct us the path to greatness. That's why we are looking at divine path to greatness. Divine path to greatness. It is in his power to make great. He knows what greatness is and he knows what it takes. That's why he said, when I give you a commandment and you hearken to that commandment and observe and do it, I will make you great. I will make you great. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So he owns greatness and is in position to give guidance to greatness. It's in position to give guidance to, to, to greatness. If you look at the beginning of that chapter, it says, And it shall come to pass, Deuteronomy 28, If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, Above all the nations of the earth. Above all the nations of the earth. Wherever you go, you will be in touch with the above position. But however, 
It requires your cooperations, your diligence with God's instruction per time. God's instruction per time. And that's why we'll be looking at divine path to greatness. Because people are scrambling to get to be great. People are scrambling to be great. You cannot make yourself great. It is God who owns greatness that can make you great. And this he does, irrespective of your current position, this he does by what? By simply instructing you. Instructing you. You see, if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. And you know what the Bible says about the voice of God? He said the voice of God is powerful. It can break the cedar of Lebanon. There is no barrier that have limited you and make you to be beneath of life. There is no barrier that the voice of God cannot break and give you easy passing to the high places. And I see God bringing you there. I see God bringing me there. Amen. Let me hear your amen. amen. I see God bringing each and every one of us. Because he said, that is the place, that is his ultimate uh, place for all his children. He has enough space there. He has enough space there. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, but to see, as the nature of God, in Isaiah chapter 55, Turn your Bible with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55. I read from verse 1. Mm. Isaiah 55. You will see him saying something there. He said, Oh, everyone that tasted. Come ye to the water, and he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And then he went for, he said, wherefore do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfy not? Hacking diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. There are things money cannot buy. And one of such things that money cannot buy is greatness. Money can't buy greatness. You may buy a position for yourself, but you may not be able to sustain it. It is God that makes great. He told Abraham, I will bless you and make your name great. And if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. So God has a plan of greatness in place for every one of us. You remember that in Galatians chapter 3, I think verse 29. He said, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. What I did in the life of Abraham, I can also do it in your life. Praise God. I said, praise God. Yeah. So, now, but in, in God's way, the way he makes people, the way he does his things are not the ways of men. Are not the ways of men. I will take you through in verse 8 of the same Isaiah 50, 55. He said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Say the Lord. For as heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thought than your thoughts. And I, I love these two verses of 8 and 9. So the ways of God to greatness is different from the way of man to, to greatness. We see this in politicians. They buy greatness. They bribe their ways. They pay voters to vote for them. They bribe the electoral officer and rig election to get greatness. God said, no, me, I don't do my own things that way. My ways are not your ways. 
My what? My thoughts are not your thoughts. Say the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than they are, so are my way higher than your ways, and my thought than your thought. So, God's way is the pathway to higher life. God's way is the pathway to higher life. God's way is the high flyers of life. God's way, God's way. God's way is the treading ground of every high flyer in life. You have company with dwarfed enough. You have been below enough. Time has come that you embrace God's way so that I can fly you higher. So that I can fly you higher. Praise God. I said praise God. So God's divine pathway to greatness, it's not the same as men. Men will slander you and create greatness for themselves at that moment that you are not present. But you know, when you arrive, the greatness disappears. It's just like when, when, the, when, when, when there is snow and sun appear, the snow melts. But by the nature of the doings of God, God believes in durability. You see, the Bible says, whatever the Lord doeth shall be forever. So that is why his ways are not our ways, and our thoughts are not his thoughts. And he said, look at it. As heaven is higher than the earth, so are his ways. So God's ways are highways of life. God's ways are highways of life. Now, what is, I want to talk about one of the the divine pathway to greatness. And that is servanthood. Servanthood. You see that? <laughs> God is talking about highway above, but he's talking to you first on the mystery of servanthood. A servant. And he's talking about above. But we all know that servants are on the basement. They are on the basement of life. But God said, well, that is how I take people up. That is how I take people up. <laughs> we all know in life, the only thing you start from the top is graveyard. And many have dug their graves in their quest to want to be great. The desire for greatness is an it's an inborn in every human being. Everyone wants to be great. There is nothing wrong for you to desire greatness. It is an emblem of righteousness. You can't be right and be going down. That's why they call it uprightness. When it is right, it must be up. When you belong to Jesus, the top places belong to you. But look at it. But you don't start your journey to greatness... By standing on the top. No. You start your journey to the top by being a servant. By being a servant. By being a faithful servant. And I'll be talking in the next a series of brokers on this subject. I've seen many people putting nozzles of life on their neck in their quest for greatness. No, there is a divine path to greatness. Stop putting nozzles on your, on your neck. Line up with the thought of God. Line up with the ways of God. The ways of God, the divine ways of God to greatness is by being a servant. By being a servant. By being a servant. The above only position is reserved by God for those who who will embrace his ways of getting of taking them there which begins with servanthood if you like you call it stewardship by being a servant by being a servant by being a servant i've watched many people you see them up today, by next week they are down. You see them, it look like they are up, they are down. The, the reason is this. <laughs> they 
They are trying to buy greatness with means such as their mouths. They want to buy greatness. You find some people and just say, oh, how are you? I've not seen you. He has been in town for long. Instead of him just telling you, I've been in town. He said, you know, uh, I've not been around. Uh, I needed to tour uh, the Caribbean island. I was where, I was where, I was where. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to create greatness. It's time to create greatness. How can somebody who does not, who does not have passport be in Caribbean island? Just to tell you I'm in town. He will not. There are people who talk to me sometimes and I could not help them. And what I would have given to them, they don't have. But you see, over projection of selves. Over projection of self. I want you to know today, if what you know, if what you know is not exalting you, there is a problem. If what you claim you know is not bringing exaltation to you, there is a problem. There is a problem. There is a problem. You can't fake greatness. You can't fake it. You can't. You just have to toll the part of God that delivers it. And it is servanthood. I'm telling you. It is servanthood. I will read that scripture for you before we close and then we'll be building up. Amen. You know, what you don't have, you can give. Greatness belongs to God. Therefore, it's only God who can give it. Greatness belongs to God. Therefore, it's only God who can successfully take us there. Many people try to get to make themselves great by all method, but the truth is this after a while, because time and situation will try whosoever you say you are. You can't claim you are gold when we put you in fire, we will know you are a human being. <laughs> Only gold triumph among many things. Only gold triumph successfully and emerge the best when it is passed through fire. If you say you are gold. Okay, we will not argue with you. We will put you in fire. It is there you will know you have blood and water in your body. I give you Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 23 as I lay foundation today. Because I want, I, I'm going somewhere to debunk that mentality that is because you are a Christian. That's why you are not promoted in your office. It's a lie of the devil. I want to debunk that mentality that is because you are of this tribe, of that nationality, of that nationality, of that problem. That is why you are not elevated. You are not lifted. You are not given the above position. It's a lie of the devil. It's just that your thought about it is not lining up with the one that own greatness. Who happened to be God? You don't have to. You don't have to travel anywhere to be great. There is a pathway to it. That's why you find out in all profession, in all profession of life, there are great people. There are great tailor. There are what great tailor. There are great driver. There are great gardener. There are gardeners that earn more than a manager. It depends on whose garden you are keeping. Praise God. It depends on who you are driving. Praise God. I said, praise God. Well, let's close today by setting the base. Matthew chapter 23, that will be our last verse. Our last verse of scripture, verse 11. Jesus said, But he that is the greatest among you 
shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humble himself shall be exalted. You see that? You see that scripture? So, servanthood is the divine pathway to greatness. Servanthood is the divine pathway to greatest, to greatness. In Mark, Jesus put it this way. He said, who among you want to be the greatest? Let him be a servant. Of how many? Of all. And who among you want to be the chief? Let him be the servant of all. Let him be the servant of all. Stop making artificial ladder to climb up. Gone on up. And his ladder to it is servanthood. All this your artificial ladder, you will crash. You see what he said? He said, whosoever shall exalt himself shall be brought low. And whosoever shall humble himself shall be exalted. You see that? So you don't own greatness. I don't own greatness. God own greatness and only him can give it. Only him can give it. If you look at the same thing that how the word was put uh, uh, in Mark, a time came among the disciples. I read verse, <laughs> verse. I promise you, it's the last one. Mark nine thirty three. The same account. He said, and he came to Capernaum and be in the house. He asked them, what was it that ye disputed among yourself by the way? But they held their peace. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Verse 35. And he sat down and called the twelve and said unto them, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. See that? If any man, any man, it doesn't matter your family background, desire to be the first, he said, the same, the same, that position that he wanted, he must cede it to order. <laughs> That's the meaning. You want to be the first. You must see it to order. That's where servant will be come out from. You want to be number one. That is what you want. It's not a bad thing. God said you will be number last of everybody. You must sow that as a seed. do bredula. I want to be number one. I want to be number one. That is ahead of you. Then I will show that intention as a seed by making you, by doing things, by availing myself to make you number one first. We'll continue here. You see, we are back to Genesis. As long as the earth remained, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. God said you are not going to get it except you first of all turn yourself a seed of it for others. May the Lord bless your soul. May he grant you understanding. We thank God for all the county that are locked down. They are now open. May God grant them recovery in whatever they have lost. May God bring a restoration of all the weeks that the canker worm, the plumber worm, the caterpillar have eaten of their business. I pray for them this morning and I bid them God's supernatural speed in recovery for whatever they have lost. And I pray for the life of those families who probably have lost someone because of the rampage of, of, of COVID in those regions. I, I pray for the comfort of the spirit 
And I pray that the vacuum that is created, the Almighty God will fill it. You will lose, you will lose nothing anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you, wonderful people. If you are there, you are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. This morning, I would like you to receive Jesus. There is nothing you can gain in this world. No position can be compared to being in salvation. Receiving Christ is the greatest gift. And this one, if you are willing, I don't know how you are. I don't know your present situation. But one thing I know, when Christ comes into your life, he's going to make a big difference. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to receive Jesus this morning. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. But this morning, I invite you. Come into my life. Forgive me my sin. I'm truly sorry for all my sin. I ask you, Jesus, write my name in the book of life. Cleanse me with your precious blood. For with my heart, I believe. And with my mouth, I confess that you are the Lord. And I truly subscribe for the perfect work of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord prosper you. This morning, we would like to worship the Lord with our substance. Praise God. You want God to bless you? Sow a seed. <laughs> you want God to bless you? Sow a seed. Stop, you know, people will always tell you, especially uh, a faithful people who believe in the message of grace, which I also subscribe for. We are saved by grace. But you see, the fruit of your salvation is an another level of grace. And that grace demands that you stop living by mercy and start living by faith. Stop, start living by faith. The reign of God falls even to the house of the wicked. That is mercy. The Son of God shines even to the house of the wicked. That is mercy. But the faith of God makes a, a big difference. Start living by faith. The just shall live by his faith. Faith demands that scripturally God multiply the seed so. At this hour, I want you to bring out your seed. Why do we exhort people to give? We exhort you to give because that is one of the faithful ways to attract God's blessing in a volume that will make you live an outstanding life. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord give you an understanding. Family and Father, as they are casting their, 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 their seed, those who are using m -Pesa, those who are using bank transfer, those who are in Nigeria, in other nations, as you are giving your offering this morning, I bless that offering in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And I pray that your offering be acceptable unto God and used for the expansion of his kingdom. Thank you, faithful Father, in Jesus' precious name. It is a new week for you, a new day for you. The blessing of God will follow you in Jesus' precious name. Be blessed in Jesus' precious name.